everyone welcome back to RTS and what do I have today well I just have a little review the supply because I had showed a t DIY tassel bow video which I'll link that below and then also too as a giveaway and within the giveaway I was gifting some handmade bows and I got a lot of comments that people wanted to see this bow in action and it's a Fisker's Punch and I'll talk about that in just a minute and another little tip and another little bonus so hang on there I got it all going on okay I love when you guys ask me questions I love it okay so what do we have here we have these little bows now I want to say what the dimensions are and so you can get a visual because it's so hard when you're buying punches and dies to get a visual of how big they are so the bow itself is about one and a half inches long and if you put that on a post-it pad because we all know what a post-it notepad looks like that's about the size so it's about one and a half inches across okay it's a cute little bow and I have to get something out here before I forget something I want to show okay I got this out I just get so many ideas and I can't show them all okay so what is this punch simply it's a Fisker's punch now I want to say something about Fisker's right off the bat that a lot of people probably don't know and I have been scrapbooking well, in a couple months it will be 23 years that I have been scrapbooking and guess what I started out with a Fisker's punch in 23, let me correct that. I started out using a Fisker's trimmer and 23 years later, guess what I'm still using? Fisker's trimmers. And you know why? Lifetime warranty. Okay. And I will talk about that in another upcoming video about Fisker's. But when I say Fisker's, just remember lifetime warranty and they really stand behind that. I even have garden tools that are by Fisker's. It's just a great company. And my mom is a seamstress by trade and she has a lot of Fisker's scissors because they're lifetime warranty and they stand behind that. And so I'll talk about them in another video coming up. But Fisker's, you can't go wrong with Fisker's. <laughs> it's just a really good company. So this is a Fisker's and what they call this is, you know, of course it's a squeeze punch. Okay, and we all know what that is. And this is an extra large punch, and they call this a bow tie squeeze punch extra large. Now, the tariff on this is about $18 to $20. So, of course, you would want to find a place where you could use a coupon. I don't know if I've seen these in, you know, I don't go to stores a lot because of where I live. Everything's a two-hour drive. So, I don't know if Hobby Lobby's or Michael's or, well, you know, I think Joann's, if you had a bigger Joann store, you know, the superstores, I think they carry that in their superstore because I got this online at Joann's. So you could wait till they have a sale or, of course, you know, you can check Amazon, scrapbook.com, places like that, but you won't get them on sale. But what you can do is you can go to the Fisker sites themselves now and they sell products on their actual Fisker site. And if your order is over $50, it's free shipping. <laughs> so consider that. You know, sometimes what you get for a discount, you have to make up in shipping. So if your order is over 50 at Fisker's, and I know they still have that on their website. Okay, so that's a Fisker's squeeze punch, bow tie, extra large, $18 to $20. You can try to find it on sale. And I would say this is one of those ones to grab while you still can. So it, that is the size of it. That's how much it costs. So all you simply do... And again, you use scraps. Do you want to see something? Okay. Okay. You know, the raccoon, just bear with me. I just finished 31 days of load. Okay. And some of you will know, you won't know, but I did finish 31 days of load. This is my small scraps from 31 days of scrapbooking. Okay. Now oh, that's a big piece there, but that is my small scraps from 31 days of scrapping in a row. And this is why I did that whole organizing your scraps video, because if you would keep something like this, you see how this just bogs you down if this is not something you use, okay? And so I will link that video below. Go check it out. <laughs> it's worth watching, but yeah, that that's not going to stay in my room very long. So I purposely kept some of these scraps for another project. So if you have, if you're someone who likes small scraps, uh, hit that notification button because I'll have another video coming up what to do with small scraps. Okay, some more fun things. So, simply what you do. Oh, yes, just keep rolling. That's what we're doing. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, so you just simply go in and it will give you three cuts. <laughs> it will give you these three cuts right off the bat. Okay, now let me get a bright one. And so, what I do is I will punch a bunch of these and then I'll punch them 
you know, grab a lid and I'll punch a bunch of these. <laughs> punch a bunch. I will punch a lot of these. And then I will take this without the punch and I'll go sit when I'm watching a movie or something. That's what I do. Okay. Because this gets annoying if you're trying to watch a movie. So I would just, you know, at one time, just sit, punch a bunch of those and just keep going. Okay. And you don't want to lose these little, these little babies. Okay. Now you have a little bit left over. You could try to swing it, but you know, not going to work. Don't sweat it. But sometimes you can. And then, see, I basically, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I did. I did squeeze that out. Okay. And then what you can do with this little piece left over, you can try to grab that little, that center piece. Okay. But then, you know, you can have all those. So there, I squeezed it. Sometimes if you maneuver it around your paper, you can get, you no, know, because you want a set of three every time you do it. Okay. And that's all you do. Okay, so you have these three pieces. Where's my little tail? There. Okay, so we're going to do a pink one. But you can use your small scraps. Okay, now let me show you a little tip when you're dealing with small scraps and a punch. I learned this many years ago. Okay, so of course, you know, if you take this small scrap, that's not going to work. How are you going to do that? Okay, you want to know a tip? Grab your post-it. Okay, and you put that sticky part right on the edge and now you have a bigger scrap now you can put that in your punch I put that in too far okay okay there's a little scrap and now look at that make sure it's centered up and that's how we do it that's the way we do it <laughs> okay so if you have a small scrap you want to use it but you can't, you know, you put it in, you lose grip of it. Do the post-it trick. <laughs> I learned that many years ago. Okay. Okay, so let's do this red one. It's pretty. Very, very pretty. So what do you do? Okay. The well, first thing I do is, I was going to show you with my finger, but you can use a pencil. And you can just see how you're going to curve that around. Yes, yes. Just curve that around. Now you can use your finger. You don't even need to do a pencil. You just curve that around. Actually, you can just go right over your finger. Okay, and that'll give you your loops because you don't want them smashed. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that and you're gonna meet in the middle. Now, some people use glue dots. I, I don't really, I think glue dots are very expensive for what you get, okay? And then you'd have to get the little ones but I, you know me, I'm I'm a quick dry gal. If if I could own stock and scotch, I would. Okay, I just put a little bit bit there. Okay, and so then when I'm making them, I do an assembly line. So what I would do is I would punch a bunch, <laughs> and then I would lay these out on my in my lid, and then I would do an assembly. Okay, and you're going to have to hold that for a second. So what I would do is I would pick this part up and then I would do this. Okay, and then I would pick, you know, a bunch up and then I would do this part. Okay, so be, see how it's going to have to, this is one of those things you do in front of the TV. Because it's going to have to hold a little bit. And you know when you're trying to rush things. Okay, I'll stick a little more on there and see if it'll stay, but... Okay, now when you're doing that, you know, make sure you don't squeeze your sides in because you don't want a flat bow. Okay. Okay, so we'll hold this a little bit. I probably should have had a couple done. Okay, so then what you do is then, we're going to make you stay. Okay, so it's there. You just put a little bit there on your tail in the center. And you line that up the best you can. Now my, my bow... Okay, and you can tell where it goes because there's that notch. Okay, there's going to be that notch and you'll know. Okay, and you give it a squeeze. Again, and if you do smash your, your actual bows, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm squeezing that. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then what we're going to do is the best thing is to hold, center it in the front and then wrap it around the back. And I'm going to do another one. 
and then this is where you're going to do your glue and you know the back doesn't have to be perfect because who's going to look at the back you're going to have this adhered to something and i just put a little glue on there hold that and pinch that now here's a little tip when you're doing these you need to lay these out flat. Do not stack them because they're going to dry. And if you don't, if you do stack them, they're going to stick to one another because that glue is still wet. So lay them out, you know, lay them out one by one. Don't stack because they will stick to one another. How do I know? <laughs> because I make these kind of things when I'm traveling because, you know, sometimes, you know, our, our rides can be hours and hours. And so, okay, so let's do another one. Let's do this one. And I hope you don't hear any thunder. We are having a mega, mega storm. I mean, some kind of spring. You wait all this time for spring, and what a disappointment. So again, this is what I'm doing. I'm just taking my finger, wrapping around those loops. You can use a pencil, okay? Okay, and just roll it. Oops. Or you can use a stylus. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're just shaping those loops is all you're doing. See, and that's what it looks like. Okay, and there's my tails and there's my little wrapper, my center. Okay, so again, and when you do that roll, see, it helps you form that bow. Okay, so we're going to take this little glue. And I can tell I'm getting low on my, my quick dry, but no fear. I have many in my inventory. <laughs> okay, and we're going to pinch that a little bit. And, you know, of course, it's not going to hold because I'm hurrying. And then we're going to center that in that tail and do a wrap around. Okay. Now, I will tell you, the thicker your paper, the longer it's going to take for your glue to dry. And see, I put a dab right there in the center of that tail. Okay, pinch that again. <laughs> it keeps coming. Okay. And I'm centering that. And you can see there's that notch. Okay, you're going to center that. Okay, and pinch, 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 pinch an inch. <laughs> yeah, I can pinch an inch all right. Okay, so then we're going to take this center, this center piece, and I center it in the middle, and then I wrap it, and then turn it over. And believe me, these go faster when you're doing assembly line. Anything you can do in assembly line, you're going to, you're going to, have a much more effective time. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold this for a second. So I would punch all these. Now the only thing is when you're punching a lot of those, you have to keep them all in the same, I just keep them in the same color family. I don't try to do them in sets of threes, you know what I mean? Like I don't put this here and then a tail and then a center. No, I just keep them all in one color family. That's what I do. And I would just punch out all my scraps because, it, like I said, if you're watching a movie or something, this could be annoying to someone sitting beside you. So I would punch all these and then take this and this when you go watch a movie. Okay? And there. There we go. Where's our little red one? Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. And like I said, the, the, the amount of things you can use these little bows on. Endless. Okay. So I wanted to show you a little tip with this stylus. So what I do and with my stylus is I go in and see how that got a little flattened. That's all right. I take my stylus and I go in there and I just take that metal part and I'm just simply reef shaping that loop. See the difference? You can see the difference there. I'll point it a little closer. See that difference? And so that's all I'm doing is just taking this stylus you don't have a stylus what could you use I got cut off there I don't know what that was about so what I did was I'm just taking my stylus and I'm just reshaping those bows that's all I'm doing now I don't know if this got cut off but I'll do it again you can use your Tim Holtz tools but you know be careful that's pointy okay okay anything to reshape those bows okay now, I don't suggest that because I, I I could get hurt real quick on those, okay? If you have a stylus, that ball, you know, doesn't hurt. And that's what I do, okay? And so you can reshape. Just as cute as anything, okay? Look at that. Oh, see, now there's a flat one. And there's one I reshaped to bows. 
okay now flat ones look good on cards especially if you're going to mail them so you don't you wouldn't even have to do that if you didn't want to but i'm taking my stylus and i'm just reshaping those loops okay and i hope this isn't getting too long but hey when you're learning it doesn't matter if it takes three hours right amen okay oh isn't that just cute love it and so then again that would be something i do batch i would reshape all of them when they're all dried okay and sometimes when i do projects like this i'll let it dry one night and then i'll reshape them the next okay that is that what else did i want to say mm, okay you know i showed you that little trick use your quick dry and you could also use if you if you're not a fan of quick dry you could also use where's my tombow you could also use this Tombow Mono, okay? This gives you a little bit of wiggle, wiggle room, but this dries quicker. That's why it's called Quick Dry. Okay, so I recommend that. Okay, so there's the scraps. There's how that Fisker's Punch is. Again, $18 to $20. Try to find it on sale. Try to find it on a coupon. Fisker's Lifetime Warranty. Can't beat it. Now, I have another little thing, okay? I recently went to a Tuesday morning, and I found something to add to my giveaway for the tassel bows. Okay, you wanna see what it is? I found some Bella Boulevard cute clips, okay? And they're bows on paper clips, okay? Now, I'm going to put those in with the giveaway, but if you want an extra entry for that giveaway, go back to that video, and I'll have a link below, and you can have a second entry, so don't worry about that. And in your comment, all you have to do is put the word Fiskars. And that way I'll know you watched this video, okay? So just put in the word Fiskars. You don't even have to spell it right, <laughs> okay? Just put in Fiskars. And if you are the winner and you said Fiskars, I will throw this in with your giveaway prize. Now, you see how this happens. I showed a video recently. And someone had commented that they never knew you could use the undo for this. But you see how when you take price hikes off, you don't want to give something like that. No, Martha Stewart would just have cardiac arrest. No, you can't do that. That's not... That's not presentation anything. So I had showed in a recent video, which I'll have that linked below, to use this undo remover. And it's in that video how you can make your packages without these price tags and make them look a little bit better. So if you want an extra entry, go to the DIY tassel bow giveaway, type in the word Fiskars, and if you win, I'll include these in your giveaway prize. Okay, so that's it. I hope that was a neat little tutorial. If you have any more questions, I would recommend adding that into your inventory. If you're not on a spending freeze, if you're on a spending freeze, put it on your wish list, okay? Christmas will be here before we know it. Because honestly, I was in a Hobby Lobby this week and I saw they're putting out fall, yes, fall, autumn decorations. And I thought, man, I'm really behind the eight ball. You know, pretty soon we'll be exactly on the right holiday at the right time <laughs> if we do it right. Okay, so there you go. That's that little tutorial, great little punch, so simple to do, something you can do in front of the TV, but if you want to be efficient on this, do it in batches. Okay, that's all I have for today, and come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.